Welcome to Track by Track Reviews. <sighs> See, we've rented out our uh, new studio. This is where we're going to be filming uh, the majority of our guest reviews and guest discussions. And today we've got for you folks Andy Wallace. Yes, yes, clap it up, Andy Wallace. Oh, thank you, thank you. Andy Walsh has come in Hello. to talk about Airbag's identity. How's it going, Andy? It's going great, really. Alright, so the first track on the album is called Prelude, and uh, this is just sort of a short little intro. Uh, you start off hearing a clicking, ticking clock, uh, some ambient noises, and then the guitar comes in. I like this song, but it's not like my favorite song in the album or anything. I'm not going to be like, oh, check out, check out Prelude, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, like, it's a good song, and I think the guitar is really good. Right off the bat, you hear the Pink Floyd influence, and uh, yeah, like, well, Airbag did start out as like a, tri a Pink Floyd tribute band. Like, what I like about Prelude is you can it gets those influences out of the way. <laughs> you can clearly see the influence of Pink Floyd, and it's that, it reminds me very much of Pink Floyd tracks like Marooned. Yeah, where it's mostly it's slow. Just solo. Yeah, I like the idea of a Prelude. Um, sort of along the lines of uh, The Who's Tommy, they have Overture, and then Seeger Rose on their 1999 album, which I don't know how to pronounce, has, uh, I think, like, intro or something. Um, it sort of tells you you're, you're in for a trip, like, you're in for an adventure when you hear this album. And I think Identity is, along those lines, definitely an experience. Yeah, definitely. All right, the next song on the album is called No Escape, and this is a really good song. Uh, yeah, it's one of those songs, looking at any of the songs on the album, if any of them is going to be a hit, like on the radio, it yeah. would be No Escape. This one, it's, it's got that really catchy guitar riff. Yeah, and the guitar's the, great. Not only is it... <coughs> I'm sorry. Dead dead. What? Infectious. <laughs> yeah. It really gets into you. It kind of eats away at your core and yeah. you die. But... Sounds terrible. Like... <laughs> what Don't it? listen to this album. <laughs> it's not safe! <laughs> But no, it's, it's got, instead of, you know, being just a bunch of power chords or yeah. a few notes, it's quite a few notes, but it's a really great riff. This is the first song I heard from the album that actually caused me to go buy the album, and it's because I saw it on your movie trailer, Last One, plug, um, <laughs> and yeah, I heard the song and I really liked it, and I was looking for it, and I, I couldn't find it, so you told me about the band, and I liked the sample clips I heard, I downloaded the whole album, so just... Artists and record labels, let people on YouTube use your fucking music. It, ju it just got Airbag an album because they're being smart and cool. So, thanks Airbag. There's no guitar, guitar solo on this song, but the guitar itself is really, really good during the chorus and the whole song. And the whole chorus, the singing is catchy as hell. They, they really show the song, they're not just like mood music. Yeah. They can be really out there, really pumping, mm -hmm. really energetic. Safe Like You, and this is every bit as well done as No Escape. Yeah. Um, it's, it's got that really hard chorus. Slower. Yeah, definitely slower. I can't say I like the guitar as much, but there's some good moments on the guitar. Uh, That's most, mostly memorable about the song is the lyrics. Yeah. The chorus is really, really good. Uh, that's probably the part that sticks with me the most. Um, the lead singer puts a lot of emotion into this. Yeah, he does. This is definitely one of the most emotional songs of the album. Okay, the next song is called Steal My Soul, and I like this song, but not in the extreme way that I do No Escape or Safe Like You. It starts off with the slow piano part, then there's some, some singing, and then the guitar comes in, distorted, and then there's this part about halfway in that reminds me a little bit of Climbing Up the Walls by Radiohead, and I like that part a lot. And then it builds into a guitar solo that I like, but I, I'm not like, oh man, like, I really, this, this is fucking awesome. This song is one of those instances on the album. There are several songs on the album that have a lot of the same, mostly the same structure. And, yeah. And that's really my only problem with the album, is that after listening to a couple of the songs, you realize how similar some of them are. Yeah. I don't know. There wasn't anything that totally stood out on this song yeah. to make it like one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, it's still a good song, though. Yeah. 
The next song is called Feeling Less, and at 5.05, this is the shortest song on the entire album, which might bother some people. There's a lot of long tracks on this album, um, you know, like six to eight minute point, you know. But if you're a Pink Floyd fan. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, mostly people uh, that, who are going If you listen to Pink Floyd, you're used to it. That, that's the 22 that's, minute long track. Yeah, that's a pro, not a con. This is probably one of my least favorite songs on the album. Uh, the, I like the guitar hook, but the vocal melody just doesn't do too much for me. Uh, what do you think? It's just a little bit too much of the same of what yeah. happened, what has happened on several of the songs before. Yeah. yeah. The next song is called Colors, and Andy, I think we can both agree this song is fucking awesome. This is definitely my favorite song of the Absolutely. album. Absolutely. This is my favorite song of the album, by far. Particularly, um, one, I'm a guitar person. Yeah. I love listening to guitar. And guitar solos are always my favorite part of, yeah. part of songs, mostly. Yeah, and even as a drummer who just likes music a lot, I can be like, this song, the guitar is incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has all the ingredients for a badass guitar solo. Um, there's sort of this gloomy, mysterious mood uh, throughout the song. It also slowly builds and builds and builds. Uh, there's a little guitar solo at the beginning that's like, warning you like, hey, in a couple minutes I'm about to make you shit yourself, like, just be, be aware. And then, right before the solo, there's this guitar part that leads into the solo. It's a lot of Perfectly, echo. yeah. It's powerful. It, it starts off quite, almost from complete silence. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, there's several layers yeah. of guitar echo. <laughs> Yeah. And then goes right into the solo. Yeah, so at 6.10, you proceed to jizz yourself and do so <laughs> until the end of the song. Like, seriously. So, let's just listen to the, the solo. We'll be handing out tissues at the end of the show for anyone who just jizzed themselves. The next song is called How I Wanna Be. Ah, oh, it's powerful. This song also starts off with a slow piano, some ambient sounds in the background, to add some layers, and some really pretty singing. It does have a build, but it doesn't actually build into anything. Like, I feel like the song kind of didn't go anywhere. I get, Maybe it's just because it went after colors. Like, I was expecting another, like, yeah. line-bending guitar right. solo. I mean, that's kind of how a lot of the songs are after you listen to Colors. Yeah. Like, it's great, but it's not Colors. Yeah, it's not Colors. All right, the last song on the album is called Sounds That I Hear, and this is another song that I don't really go back to too much. The chorus didn't really suck me in. I really like this solo in this song. It's really tasteful and I don't want to say soulful, but the song itself as a whole didn't really do too I, much for me. I kind of have to disagree with you, Roy. Really? I, I really like Sounds That I Hear. It, I, I think it's one of the most heartfelt songs on the album. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of emotion going throughout the There's album. a lot of emotion, definitely. But, I don't know, as a whole, maybe, it, once again, maybe it's just colors. Agree to disagree. Fuck you. So that's the album. All in all, some really good epic music, um, amazing guitar throughout this album, yeah. and I think to separate it from a lot of different bands is the subtle ambient sounds that give the songs a lot more depth. Even as a drummer, like I said, you can respect this album for the guitar because it's incredible. Bjorn Reese, the guitarist, is one of my new favorite guitars. Yeah, I mean, seriously, some of the best guitar I've heard in a really long time. And actually, the guitar is... One of the reasons I would take some points off maybe for this album, because I feel like pretty much every song on the album was guitar focused. Um, yeah. I feel like the spotlight wasn't really distributed evenly, but I feel like here it's definitely you're focused on the guitar in yeah. most if not all of the songs, which does make it you, after you a while you're like potential with all <laughs> with all yeah. the musicians. They definitely know what they're doing. Maybe but, the next album pull back on the guitar a little bit. Yeah. Throw out some more. More bass, more, yeah. more drums, more and, keyboards. And, uh, I mean, we don't like the guitar, the guitar is awesome. No, yeah, the guitar is amazing. But yeah, I, I like this album a lot. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I thought it was really good. I'm going to give it an 8. I don't like decimals.
My name is Rory Sullivan, this is Andy Walsh, and this has been Track by Track Reviews.